This is by Christopher Dawson, Inquiries into Religion and Culture. And it's on a paper, this was article put out by the Frankfurt School, Conspiracy to Corrupt by Timothy Matthews, but this is so relevant today. Western civilization at the present day is passing through a crisis which is essentially different from anything that has been previously experienced. Other societies in the past have changed their social institutions or their religious beliefs under the influence of external forces or the slow development of internal growth. But none, like our own, has ever consciously faced the prospect of a fundamental alteration of the beliefs and institutions on which the whole fabric of social life rests. Civilization is being uprooted from its foundations in nature and tradition and is being reconstituted in a new organization which is as artificial and mechanical as a modern factory. So it's being done from the inside. I want to just mention here another video I'd like you to look up on Google Video which is Common Purpose, Brian Gerrish. That's nice and easy to remember. We'll put the words up for you. Common Purpose, Brian Gerrish, and then you get a whole new field to study on there as well. Fifth column working from the inside out, and that too is is following Fabian agenda. Um, this is huge, isn't it? It's huge, yeah. yeah. This is an important book, Fern. Um, this is an old book, actually. It's it's, um, it's, uh, it's by Lord Hewer of Bury. I think he was a Lord Chief Justice. Um, in the 20s, I think this was. Uh, let's, see, let's see the date. Um, and it's called The New Despotism. That's lovely, five shillings. <laughs> yeah, it was five shillings. Yeah. That's lovely. It was, it, was, it was published in 1929. Now, yes. what Lord Hewitt was talking about, he was talking about the way that, um, with the new statutes and so forth that were coming in, very often it would be the minister that would decide uh, on a particular... Um, decision, and actually it wasn't really the minister; it was just some um, somebody in the civil service. Yes. But what the Fabians did, they were they were in, instrumental in getting the Parliament Act passed in 1911, and this is um, it's under the Asquith government, which was actually a oh, lib actually yes. a liberal government. Yes. But there's there's plenty, there's lots of, there's always been lots of Fabians in the li in the Liberal Party. Yes. And and today the Liberal Democrats. But anyway. Oh. Um, they're, they're in all parties, not just in Labour. They're, 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 I'm sure there's even some Conservative ones. But anyway, uh, Lord Hewitt of Berry, he realised that, um, that, that by using statute law to put all these... Um, to put all this authoritarianism into place, yes. this was a, a, a challenge to our, to our rule of law, actually. And he wrote this book about it. But um, he, was a, he was aware of that back in 1929, and um, that's a very important book to read and to understand how they've actually put all their rules and regulations into place yeah. and how they've tried to dismantle our constitution. And because um, they, they had the first attack on the House of Lords then, um, and they've attacked it um, regularly since then. I got, I've, I've got a, uh, a Fabian paper, actually, about the monarchy, and I looked for it before I came here today, and I couldn't find it. But um, they did a—they're always 
think of any of any way that they can attack the institution of the monarchy in this country. Yes. Um, we've got a constitutional monarch. Now, um, they did this Fabian paper, I think it must have been about 10 or 15 years ago. One of the, one of the gentlemen that, that, that's involved in it is, is Professor Stephen Hassler, who's a, who's a very well-known opponent of, of, of the monarchy in this country. But I looked through this paper that they'd made, they, they'd published, and nowhere in that paper was there anything about the Queen's constitutional position of, uh, of, of or the coronation oath, mm -hmm. where, she, where, she, where she promises to, to protect our laws and customs. Now, they, they can, the Fabian Society... And Professor Hassler, he completely forgets. He, 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 he doesn't forget it. He knows very well what it is. He just he just uh, chooses to ignore that, mm -hmm. and then they just keep attacking the monarchy. You know, um, take away the royal train, take away the royal yacht. Yeah. Um, you know, it's got to have an elected monarch and all this. Uh, it goes on and on and on. They, the Fabian Society has been attacking the monarchy ever since their inception. Um, another, I tell you another fascinating thing. Back into the the time of Shaw, though, have, yes. you, have you ever heard about the coefficients? We were talking about the um, the Frankfurt Society. What actually is the Frankfurt Society, and, and how do you think it affects people in their daily life? Well, Frank Frankfurt School, the Frankfurt rather, not so School, Frankfurt yeah. Frankfurt School, yeah. What, how does it affect people in their daily life, the, the activities of the Frankfurt School? I suppose most uh, of you out there think the Frankfurt School is just a school with a playground. <laughs> 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 the headmistress just the school teachers, it's not. It's, it's, uh, of course we're talking about the Fabians, I don't want to go too far into this, um, you can look it up. And the Frankfurt School, if, I, if you remember what I read out at the beginning of the video, the little list, that is their agenda. And it's virtually word for word the same as the Fabian agenda and, well, some of the other organisations too, isn't it, where they tie up. Um, but the, the main thing about the Frankfurt School is they're coming at it from the psychopolitics angle. They're doing the psycho stuff. Mm -hmm. um, Frankfurt School, fine. Yes. Um, in Western Europe, there were various people that realised that um, communism couldn't actually be achieved in um, in Britain and um, the Western European countries, in the same way that it had been achieved in in Russia, so a group of of students at the Frankfurt University got together and they decided to work on ways where they could get communism into uh, Western Europe, um, and and the way that they were going to do it, well, which effectively was to break down the the established uh, society, and they were doing it with with um, in in psychological um, means, neuro linguistic programming, stuff like that, and and that's it's about the promotion of communism, which is the same as the Fabian Society, um, same aim. Talking about how it affects us in our daily lives, it does extremely has an extreme effect on our daily, li daily lives. Everybody ma knows about political correctness. Everyone makes jokes about it. But at the same time as that, many, many people are afraid of it. Um, you know, for example, you'll get, um, you'll get your own child come back from school which, uh, and, and he or she will say uh, something that is obviously very, very um, tainted by political correctness. Mm. And we get it all the time. We get it in the. You even get it promoted by the police and everything. So, yeah. it, but what, what actually is is it? It's to get you thinking. It's it's, it's to stop you from frink, thinking freely, and and it's a way of putting your mind in a cage so you can't think freely and you you can't oppose the imposition of communism or you're less able to do so mm -hmm. it, it, it's mind control that's what it is yeah it's almost as if they're, they're taking away words out of the language we can't say anymore and when you take a word out of the language you haven't got a way of describing it 
talking about it to people so you don't mm. and it just kind of erodes away doesn't it well yeah, the, yeah. i mean it is also mm. another th another aspect of this is that the manipulation of history yeah um for example norman dodds talk in in the uh, norman dodds talks about um where they were trying to people like the carnegie endowment and the rockefeller mm. they were trying to change the American school books regarding the American history yes. and the American Constitution and yes. so forth. So they actually got a whole raft of young young people, young uh, professors and so forth, and they actually sent them over to London to be to be re-educated so that they could be the the new generation of of writers of history. But they would write it they would write it in a slanted way. So this is about manipulation of, of yes. manipulation of people. If you don't know your history, you're under a very, very severe disadvantage because you can't talk about your natural rights and so forth if you don't if you don't know your if you don't know your history. And if you, and that if it's been messed around with, um, you, you're you're very severely disadvantaged, aren't you? This was. This was actually uh, one of the books that Roberts brought. You've seen this one already, but I want to go back onto this one because this was this was actually from 1942. You can see six pence on there. <laughs> Regional government. So this is not a new idea brought about by Prescott's um, Office of Deputy Prime Minister at all, and it's not a new idea brought about by the European Union. So exactly what is it, and why have we got this? regional government in 1942 but it's um if you want to drastically change um change anything um one of the ways of, of doing it is is uh, divide and conquer so um the fab during the war time the fabian the fabians occupied the um, they had some important positions in the in the British government. What the, they decided that they would let Churchill and the Conservatives get on with running the war. They wouldn't interfere, but they were going to get ready for the for the socialist government in 1945. Um, this is one of the this this is part of their preparation, mm -hmm. where they this is long this is long term stuff. This is long term planning, and they're very very good at that. Let's give let's give them their credit. They're very very clever at at, uh, well, at working on on long term plans. This yes. is what it's all about. Slowly does it, and the, the regionalism has been promoted all over the world. Fine, I'm sure you know. In the United States, you've got mm -hmm. how many regions is it? Is it was it six? I can't remember. But it's been regional. Yes. United. They were talking about cu yes. cutting the United States up into regions right back yes. in right right back in the 30s. Yeah. And the, Crossing uh, state borders. Yeah, and this come this yeah. it, it comes from the Fabians yeah. and their associates in the United States. Yeah. Um, in obviously we tend to think that it's the European Union that's that's regionalised everything. Right. Yeah. But actually, this is this, these are the roots. And um, of course, the, re the, the 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 European Union has got Fabian roots as well. Uh, um, it goes back a long, long time. Now, um, what's very interesting about uh, regional government, as promoted by the Fabian Society, it comes in, John, John Christian talks about it in his Communist Councils in New Zealand. I know that this paper is, to a very large extent, accurate. And I know that because I've given it to some important people, and they've acknowledged to me that it's very reliable to uh, to give you an idea of, of how things are going in the world today. Right. I mean, Barry, Colonel Barry Turner did the did the notes in amplification of it. Yeah. Um, you can actually see Barry Turner's um, notes in amplification on on the Australian League of Rights website. Um, now, the Fabian Society had a five-year plan that was promoted doesn't that tie up with gordon brown five-year plan yeah well it's a it's a yeah. communist thing uh, all these five-year plans and ten-year plans yes. it, it's a co we're yeah, hearing that all yeah. the time from uh, that's right that's right so. um and it, it tells you here the british fabian society planned to take over the world by the city of london financial community was first published in a book called all these things all these things by a New Zealand author and journalist A. N. Field. The book was first published in 1936 by Omni Publications in the United States and it was censored in New Zealand. The document called Freedom and Planning Freedom and Planning 
was secretly circulated in 1932 by the inner councils of the members of the political economic plan otherwise known as PEP in London that's a Fabian organization PEP political and economic plan uh, yeah. the then chairman of the organization was a city of London Jew Israel Mose Moses Seif who was the reputed author of the plan the headquarters of PEP were at 16 Queen Anne's Gate London Mr. Seif was also chairman and financier of Marks and Spencer's chain stores, and he was vice president of the British Zionist Society. Centred around the City of London Jewry's international financiers in the Bank of England subsidiary, called the Bank Bankers Industrial Development Company, the essence of the document Freedom and Planning was, and still is, to gradually Sovietize the world based on their five-year plan inaugurated in Moscow in 1927-28 in the Soviet Union. Basically, the plan involved the subtle transfer of the entire productive capacity of each country throughout the world into a series of great state-owned departments, which would then be corporatized, then privatized the City of London, the corporation, international banks and corporations which they control individual property ownership would be severely restricted with most of the land sea fisheries rivers lakes ports railways communications media roads electricity energy food water waste management housing farms commercial property schools hospitals police social welfare inland revenue etc transferred into statutory corporations that sounds like the sustainable development it service does, it? yes Company, <laughs> companies or land trusts which indirectly would be owned by city of london banks the peasants they would still be allowed to own their own clothes and small assets like furniture cars and boats oh, toys but the main assets of each country would be owned by their multinational corporations and banks wow. In essence, the City of London Corporation would become the One World Earth Corporation and would privately own the world. Similar to the experiment carried out in the, in the USSR, the whole world would eventually be transferred into a communist United Nations World Soviet Socialist Republic, where each country would be regionalized and ruled through regional councils through a United Nations dictatorship called a Parliamentary Assembly which would just be another name for a Soviet Central Committee. And all independent, sovereign, national governments would be totally abolished. So you see, that ties in, Fern, with this, with this regional government. It does, doesn't promotion, it? Yes. yes. 1942. 1942. 1942. Yeah, that's right. yes. um, it, talking, about abolishing, um, talking about abolishing national sovereignty, there's quite an important one here. Um, this is a quotation from... Arnold Toynbee. Arnold Toynbee was a, a Fabian and he was co-originator of the Royal Institute of International Affairs. Ah. Well, that's Chatham House. Right. <laughs> that's, that's another side road, isn't it, that ties up with well, Tavistock and well, this, School? <laughs> well, he tells you straight here, he went, to, he went to a meeting in Copenhagen in 1931. Yes. I mean, I mean it's, it's not concealed, they're quite open about it. Mm -hmm. if, this is what Toynbee says. If we are frank with ourselves, we shall admit that we are engaged on a deliberate and sustained and concentrated effort to impose limitations upon the sovereignty and independence of the 50 or 60 local independent states which at present partition the habitable surface of the earth and divide the political allegiance of mankind. So that's, that's Toynbee speaking, um, Royal Institute of International Affairs. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, quite, that just reminded me of another thing. Yes. Now, uh, the Royal Institute of International Affairs was started um, 1919, I think, just after the First World War. Now, I was checking up a gentleman called Sir Henry Martin. He was the Vice Chancellor of Eton College, yes. which is just across the river, the River Thames, from Windsor Castle. Now, Sir Henry Martin, he beca he was actually the Queen Elizabeth and Queen Margaret's tutor oh, really? on, on, the on the history yes. and constitution of this country. Now, I've, I don't, I've done a little bit of digging around yeah. on Sir Henry Martin, and I, and I don't know that he was a Fabian, I can't even say that he was or not, but 
Uh, I've got no proof of that, but I do know that he was a member of the Royal Institute of International Affairs um, from from at least 1921, and right up until his death. And I also do know that there's a considerable overlap between the membership of Chatham House, which is Royal Institute of International yes. Affairs, and the Fabian Society. There's quite an overlap there. Right. So yeah. there's a, there's a good. So you can guarantee that Martin would have known. Would have known. Mm -hmm. Would have known Toynbee, and Martin was the man that taught our, our Queen the Constitution and mm -hmm. and the history. Now, lots of people, lots of uh, lots of campaigners are concerned about our Queen. They say, well, she made the promise in mm -hmm. 1952 to safeguard our laws and customs, yes. and plainly she hasn't done it because she, because she's she signed all the. All the European Union um, treaties. Yes. Um, not once has she ever put her foot down, to, as far as I, as far as far as I'm concerned. Right. So you could say, well, she, she was taught by by Henry Martin, um, is this Royal Institute man? Yes. Um, and he, he would have been he, in the Royal Institute. He would have been rubbing shoulders with mm -hmm. with all these people, um, such as Toynbee and. Uh, and and Fabians and people that have been deliberately involved in in breaking down our the national sovereignties of the different countries. Yeah. So, just a little aside there before I ask my question of Robert. Um, for the American viewers out there, I just want to point out the Royal Institute for International Affairs is a sister organisation of the Council on Foreign Relations. So look them up. It's the same kind of agenda. So anyway. Um, yet, Robert, I was going to say about the Queen here, um, it's very, very hard for us Brits, isn't it, to take in that the Queen is anything but benevolent to a country. She's such a wonderful, respected lady here. Well, she's, she's meant to be our final, um, our final safeguard of our, of, our, of our freedoms and customs and our laws, isn't she? Mm. So um, the problem is, she she made she she uttered this oath at her coronation. She, she uttered an oath to, and and she promised to safeguard our laws and customs. That's in that's in her coronation oath. It's part of our constitution, but she hasn't done it because she's handed over um, so much power to the uh, to the EU. Uh, the, but they do it in a, the, the, in a very crafty way. They say, "Oh no, no, uh, the British Parliament still has as the final as the final say." And it's true, actually. We can actually we, uh, we can repeal the, um, the the Treaty of Rome in in 24 hours. It's true. But uh, I think many British people are are very disappointed that the Queen doesn't actually exercise her power or is, she doesn't seem to be ex ex executing her power or uh, her obligation to to um, safeguard our laws and customs she doesn't seem to have done that at all it has been done hasn't it quite recent i think queen anne did and one of the georges course, yeah, quite recently refused to sign an act it was a bit of a constitutional crisis but that it can be done it can it? be done yeah, yeah. and, and the, but the fabians deny yeah. that they always they always mm. deny they that's part of their thing they say that the, the monarch never sends back a bill and, and never never refuses yeah. to sign a bill but that's not it true because done. several monarchs have done it yeah. and it, I, I think it was um, was it was it king I think king edward um, in the early 20th century i think he he sent one back Oh, right, yeah, yes. but it's, it has been done. Yeah. But but they put the Fabians put it about that that it's never been done. You see, yeah. but they need to actually take down our monarchy to fully put their agenda into practice, yes. and they've been chipping away at it for for a long, 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 long time. It's it's becoming really obvious now. The um, as I said, they're trying to break down all our traditions and all our establishments, established institutions that, that make us who we are, and. The turning the the law um, system, we don't respect that anymore. We don't respect the police anymore. The mm. even the good old fire service, you know, our lovely old firemen, the British Bobby, um, and all the way they're 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 knocking on about the Queen and the royal family, and when that goes and. Now it's Parliament. We we all know right now, this minute, they they're absolutely attacking the MPs. They are. They I are. mean, okay, they've done something wrong. It's come to light, but nonetheless, it's it's just pulling away from the inside everything 
that makes us who we are. And in a way, the Queen is the last bastion of our um, sovereignty, isn't she? Well, she yeah, yeah. Well, she, she actually, yeah. yeah, the way that our constitution has worked out, yes, the Queen, the Queen is the guardian of our liberty. Yeah. yeah. Also, also, obviously, the Queen wrote from the Bible. Now, the, the thing is, you see, that the, the Fabians and the communists, they, they abhor um, the idea of God because because you, you, they can't actually put their their plan into place when when there's God there who's it's him that's that's provided you your freedoms yes but want to change they want to turn that on his head everything that you've got as George Bernard Shaw says we will provide you with everything we'll give you a, a house a job clothes but if you don't actually prove yourself worthy of all these things we're going to give you we might give you the, uh, the friendly gas or something he called it it's just 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 knock you off you know mm -hmm. but because they want to t they want to t uh, to use up the power of they want to use up god and that is really mm -hmm. the thing that, that that's motivating me probably as, uh, probably more than anything else fern well they're I, attacking the christian church i can't bear the, the sure, idea that these people set themselves up mm -hmm. as as the ultimate authority i cannot bear it mm -hmm. and that's why i, I th thought that'd be a good thing to come over here today and and talk about it that's brilliant yeah you know we've mm. we've got so many people in this country who know a lot of a lot of things like this but what we're trying to do is connect all the dots for you and give you a big big picture you know robert's got so much knowledge at well, his fingertips and more books what have well, we got here <laughs> um, well we've got some other this is a this is a big one this this is a big important book um this is um by roselle martin fabian freeway uh, it's published in in America in Chicago, 1966. That gives you so much information about the uh, about the, um, the the start of the Fabian Society. Right, well, obviously, right up to 1966. Um, mm. Incidentally, the person that's mentioned in there is is Edith Summerskill. Oh, so, now Edith Summerskill. Yeah. So let's bring this right up to date. Yeah. Edith Summerskill is the grandmother of Ben Summerskill, who's the the main the main light in in Stonewall, the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and was it transsexual group that that pushes for for promotion of their rights. Oh really? Yeah. Yes. Now, he, so they have Fabian connections. Oh yeah, too. yeah. His grandmother was Baroness Summerskill, and she was a, a, a stalwart of the Fabian Society. And isn't it interesting that Ben Summerskill yes. has now been co-opted onto the Fabian executive? Oh really? He's on it. Um, but but the the other interesting thing is that there's there are various. Um, there's certain groups, and there's one group that I was checking up the other day called Gay Mafia Watch. Gay Mafia Watch, mm -hmm. um, and these are a group of um, homosexuals and lesbians and bisexuals and transsexuals. They're a group of these pe group of such people who said, "Hang on a minute, we're fed up with being manipulated by the yeah. by the likes of of Summerskill, Ben Summerskill, and his organisation, Stonewall." He said, in other words, summer skills, as, uh, they, 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 with their crafty political manoeuvrings, mm. they're, they're using, they've tried to use um, those people, those homosexual people, uh, gay people and so forth, they've tried to use them and some of them have, some of them have, have cottoned on to it, they've twigged it and, yeah. now, and now they're, uh, and now they're, and, and now they're saying, no, no, We've, we've had enough so they're, yeah. they're being used for, for, for political purposes yes. um, and of course this gay mafia watch they go into the meaning of um, the word stonewall and it turns out that stonewall wasn't this this club in new york where there was a riot in the 60s um, it was a ma it was the nickname of a man called claiborne who was um who was in the american civil war he was a he was a he was actually a. I think he was a homosexual himself, but he wanted to use the black, the freed black prisoners, on behalf of the um, British um, forces. You see, but anyway, you, you can read it. If, you can check it out if you want. Anyway, I, I haven't gone into. I haven't gone into that stuff about Claiborne actually myself. But mm -hmm. but um, but I know that I know that, that those people are being manipulated, and some of them are getting fed up with it. Yes, but, and, yeah. and Stonewall is a Fabian front.
Right. Yeah. They've got fingers in all the pies, oh, yeah, haven't they're they? They're up to every. They're up to yeah, everything. So many fronts. They're up to everything. They're up to all the modern mm. communications. They're up. Yeah. They're on Twitter. They're up to Twitter and Facebook and all the stuff. That, all, all, all the modern stuff. Yes. They're right bang up to the minute. And they, but they're still pushing the same old, yeah. the same old agenda. And Gordon <laughs> Brown. <laughs> yeah, well, because he is. Yeah. Um, yeah. If, 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 of course, Brown is a big a, Fabian. A, big Fabian yeah. 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 Incidentally, when the Attlee government came in, got in after Churchill was kicked out in 1945, mm -hmm. they made a complete mess of everything. Um, they, we had, f we had rationing, food rationing for. I forget four, five, six years after the war finished. Yes. You could only have one and a half eggs a week, even even after even four or five years after the war finished. They had identity cards, rationing for everything. There was goodness knows how many government organisations that, that, that could just come into your house with with, with no with no permission, and it was it was coming on for a it was coming on for a Soviet state. You know, um, that was the Fabian government, and they actually propped that up with money from the United States. And then at a certain point, and, and Harry Dexter White was involved in that. Mm -hmm. Harry Dexter White, the American, and who was later found out to be a Soviet spy. They were they were they were milking the United States to prop up the Fabian government. And then when the Americans twigged it, and they they stopped it, then then they had to put the tax up. They just couldn't pay for all this all these projects that they've been having you see and they they didn't last m much longer after that but um they they're economically of course they're mm. economically they're a washout in actual fact that's quite if you, if you go on to um Lyndon LaRouche's uh, website now we don't agree with everything Lyndon LaRouche says but he's extremely mm. well informed on many things um, and he's got he's done an awful lot of research he's a learned man although he's got very very distinct opinions on things yes he says here Fabianism is among the principal expressions of that systemic moral corruption which has been employed as a weapon of psychological warfare to render nations and their peoples increasingly stupefied morally as much as intellectually and also less and less productive per capita and per square kilometer. I always found something a bit uh, incongruous with Mr. LaRouche because I could never quite understand how he's he's so sup he's enthusiastic for Franklin D. Roosevelt uh, and his government, what he did and so forth, um, and yet Franklin D. Ro Roosevelt had Fabians all around him in his government. He very, did. He did. Yes, Even he did. Then, he yeah. did. Yeah. And and I, I could never quite figure that out. And I and I wrote a me I sent a message to Mr. Larouche and asked him that question. You know, why is it that um, you you promote Franklin D. Ro Roosevelt so much? You know, yeah. when he obviously had some Fabian um, he had Fabian people around him. Advising him and so forth, like like um, Frankfurt, like Judge Frankfurter, you know, people like him. Mm -hmm. um, and he wrote back and he said to me, well, he said the reason, uh, he said, but Franklin D. Roosevelt always did everything strictly to, uh, to 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 the American Constitution, so therefore that was all right as far as he was concerned. But I, I was always a bit worried about it. it. Seemed to not quite not quite fit in for me. Yeah. And I'm still not quite sure now, but anyway, I, I keep reading things and trying to <laughs> learn, learn more, you know. That's the secret, really, isn't yeah. it? you just got to read everything. And don't close your mind if you don't like half of what they're saying. It doesn't mean to say the other half isn't right, you know. <laughs> just the whole thing is, is don't take anyone's word for it. Look it up yourself. Because it's the information's all there out there, isn't it? Yeah, the other thing we never spoke about, of course, was the Hegelian dialectic. Um, oh, George, yes. George Bernard Shaw and, and, and Sidney Webb, they pioneered the use of that mm. which is um, in debate which is where you put forward a, a thesis mm. then then there's a reaction to it and out of that reaction comes the synthesis Oh, that's problem, reaction, solution. Yeah, that's right. David yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> really yeah. good. So, yeah. so <laughs> Bernard Shaw and Sidney Webb, they yeah. were they pioneered that. And of course, you can yeah. imagine a man, an, a, such an accomplished man as George Bernard Shaw. Yes. You can imagine him in a debating situation, couldn't you? Can't you? Yeah. He, he, he so, so such such a command of the language, so so witty, so clever. Mm -hmm. Of course, obviously, he could he can steer the the, the debate pretty well. Pretty well, I would imagine. So that's something the Delphi technique. Yeah, they yeah. call that. Yeah, yeah, yeah Delphi technique. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Problem, reaction, solution. Uh, 
got a pretty. If, if you want to know what that is, on a sort of a small. This is kind of a small scale. If you were to go into a, a town and say we're going to put cameras on every corner, just. I mean, this is a nice town, say in the fifties, times when you used to leave your door open when you went shopping. You know, let your toddler wander out and play up the street. Yeah. So you walk into this town and you say, right, we're going to put cameras on every corner. We're going to follow all your trips in your cars so we know everything you're doing. They'd be, well, hollow below, yeah. Pay, yes, complete yeah. hollow below. They wouldn't allow it. No, 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 no. So they know they want the cameras up. How are they going to fix it? So they cause a problem. And that problem is caused, uh, we stop punishing children for vandalism. We stop punishing children for mugging looting we have drugs all over the street people become afraid to walk through their town center then they come up with an idea tell you what let's put some cameras up in the city center and we'll film everything that's going on and we'll protect you more control yeah you'll feel great because you'll feel safe then and we can see and everyone will say yes please yes please and now they're asking please will you put cameras up mm. job done problem reaction okay. of the people and their solution pops in and that's kind of a small scale this is an enormous big scale mm. operation too it goes from the, the smallest the smallest decisions right up to the big well, one the war yeah. is, a, is a classic yeah. um hegelian situation isn't it yeah. you, you 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 scare everybody with the um with the war on terror, um, then there's got to be a reaction and a synthesis, which is, which of course is, which is, like, which yeah. is more and more and more control and more and more loss of freedom. Yes. And, and the interesting thing is, that I was reading the other day that the BBC said that um, uh, they admitted that there was no such thing as Al Qaeda anyway. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But nothing's going to be done about it, we know. <laughs> anyway, we're, sort of we're, we're not really diversing away from Bernard Shaw and the Fabians because they're at the root of all this stuff, aren't they? Yeah. They've got their fingers in, into every little part of this. You know, you go digging back far enough and there they are. You've got 6,000 members in UK approximately. Yeah. Which of course is a tiny, a tiny amount, and, and, and out of that, out of those 6,000, it'll only be a tiny, tiny inner core that, uh, that are manipulating things. Yes, really, really yeah. The inner, the inner core, yes. you see. So really, there, there are a tiny, tiny handful of people yeah. that have had enormous effect. And the, the clever thing, one of the clever things they do, they always keep a low profile. That way, they don't get into any sort of big public controversy and so forth. They're always under people's radar, but at the same time mm. as that they're working. It, th we didn't mention the, the classic way that they work, which was set up, uh, which is permeation and infiltration. Permeation and infiltration. Now, incidentally, infiltration, that would have been carried out by the Fabian women. Um, before uh, before women had had a big part in politics and so forth, oh, they, yeah. they would be talking to influential people in the drawing rooms and influ influencing them and all this. Yes, you know? yes. Um, infiltration, getting into every type of organisation mm -hmm. and influencing it from yeah. from within. Well, no matter what it is, Conservative Party. Um, that would be any, women's organisations. Any group, anything you yeah. like. Mm -hmm. Women's Institute. Family planning stuff. Anything. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is permeation is also today is known as consensus. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Uh, so whenever you see the word consensus, yeah. uh, we're seeking a consensus on this. Yeah. Uh, that's the Fabian way. Got to get a consent because because you can always get a consensus on something. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I'm if I'm your utter enemy um, and I can't stand you or anything to do with you, there's always some little thing where I can make common cause with you. Yeah. Something, you know. Yeah. So even if we say, well, um, the road that runs from your country to mine, yes, we've got to have a, a joint committee to uh, to look after it. Yeah. Oh, all right. right we'll, yeah. we'll make we'll make common cause on that. Yeah. So they always find some little thing to make common cause on. Obviously, the environment is a big thing. Oh yes. So that's a per yes. that's a perfect thing for them to for them to. Yes. To, right, yeah. to do it, you see. Yeah, and that's pulled a lot of other groups in together, all working oh, with yeah. them, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. This is something I'd like you to see now. The inside cover of this book, The Fabian Window. And we have to remember for a minute, Gordon Brown recently coming out and he's talking about the New World Order. It's a sort of a buzzword these days. Well, here it is. The New World Order. 
So I'm just going to ask Robert to tell us quickly what this one's about, and then he's going to sum up for us what we've been talking about today and hope we can send you off with some really good information to go and uh, investigate for yourselves. Thank you, Robert. Um, yeah, this, this is written by um, Dennis Cuddy, uh, PhD. He's, um, he was in the, um, the United States Education Service for many, many years. He knows, um, he knows the way that education was managed and manipulated in the United States. Um, going right back to the time of, of John Dewey, he, in that in that booklet he gives you a um, a history of of socialism. But he goes back he goes back much before that. He goes back to French Revolution, um, and he goes back to Saint Saint, Saint Simon, who is a, uh, an important figure in in the nineteenth century, and. Um, takes it really from a from an American angle which is important for obviously it's important because he is an American but it's a it's a jolly interesting um, and very informative book that one and it, Dennis Cuddy he goes on to Radio Liberty in um, California very frequently and that's www radioliberty.com and he's frequently uh, being interviewed um, on Radio Liberty with Dr. Stan. He's on the American in, uh, website as well, New, uh, News with Views. I expect you've seen that one, Fern, haven't you? News with View, Views. Yeah, we can get all these go on the internet for the radio station yeah. too, can't yeah. we? Yeah. He's, very, he's a very knowledgeable man, mm. uh, Dennis Cuddy. Yeah. So it's important to read, to read some of the things mm. that he puts Some up. up. Yeah. I think that... Um, I think it's appalling, actually, that, that a, a tiny group of people who, who know how to... Um, manipulate the masses uh, have had so much influence over the last over more, over the last hundred years or so. I find it unbearable that, that that they should have been up to all these pranks for for all this time. But pranks that have changed everyone's life, um, and I do think the only way we can um, we can try to change things is to is to educate them. Because F Fabians always went in for what they called education. Um, it comes into their literature so much education, but, but what they can consider to be education and, and research is their other word. Mm -hmm. But but you can you can guarantee when whenever you see ed Fabian education or Fabian research, it's always twisted to to fit in with their aims. Um, and, and what we can do is to is to learn about what they've been up to. And be very, very conscious of it, and tell other people about it, because they they've had it their own way for too long.